In this video, I'm just going to be showing you how to, with a Chrome extension, allow the user to log in with a Google account through a, an OAuth 2 endpoint. And when they do that, they're going to allow us to retrieve or get contacts, create contacts, and delete contacts, all from their Google contact list. And so if this interests you at all, stick around. Let's begin. All right, before we begin actual coding, we need to get a unique key for the Chrome extension that allows us to use Google APIs and OAuth 2 endpoints. And then we need to actually go into the Google uh, console, developer console, get some endpoints or client IDs in the API. It's the whole process. So we're going to start with this. We're going to get a key for this Chrome extension. Now, there's two ways of doing this. One's the uh, development way. The other is the production route. We're not shipping this to production. So that route would be we upload the Chrome extension to the web store. Uh, Google validates it, and then we get a unique key with the Chrome extension. We don't want to do that just for testing, for testing a Chrome extension. So we're going to navigate towards our uh, Chrome browser. We're going to go to the Chrome colon slash slash extensions. We're going to click on the pack extension. We're going to navigate or browse to the folder that we're developing in. Mine's on my desktop, Chrome extension OAuth 2 authorization. Select that folder. And we should get a CRX file and a PEM file. We're concerned with the CRX file. So click OK. We're going to navigate to where that thing saved, which is on my desktop. We're going to drag it over to the browser like this. There we go. We're going to add the extension, and now we need to look for a folder with this uh, with this Chrome extension ID. So depending on which operating system you're on, I'm on Windows. If you're on Mac or Linux, it's going to be in a different directory. We're looking for the Google Chrome extensions folder. So mine's in the PC, wherever you installed your Windows. Go to Users, pick the appropriate user. We're going to go down to App Data, Local. We're going to go to Google down here. Chrome, user data, default, extensions folder, and the extension ID was KDI, is that an IGFF? KDIGFF, click on that folder, click on the version, open up the manifest file. I'm just going to use it with a, with a Vim. And we're going to copy this line here, or these two lines, this key property here. We're going to copy this, we're going to paste it in the Chrome extension manifest we're actually developing. So edit, copy, and close that, and close that. We go back to our manifest, and we're just going to add that key here. There's a comma, perfect. All right, so that's the first part. Let's just fill out the name quickly. Let's do uh, OAuth2, I don't know, auth, and we'll say testing, OAuth2, auth. This looks good, background scripts, permissions. We're going to need the identity API and the identity.email. There we go, email. And that looks good. Let's go to the, uh, actually, let's do this uh, first. Just because we drag and drop the CRX file doesn't mean the extension's actually installed, or at least the development extension. So what we need to do is remove this, and then we need to go to load unpacked. We navigate to the folder, we select the folder of the, the Chrome extension we're developing, and there we go, it's installed. Let me just pin it to the, to the bar here. And this is just the button we're going to be using to test the uh, test the Chrome extension. All right, so let's go over to the console. Dot, what is it? Console. Dot developers. Dot Google. Dot com. You log in. You create a project. I'm going to name mine. Let's name it Chrome extension OAuth two auth. And there are a few things we need to do here. Let's start off with the OAuth consent screen. This is the screen that's going to show when the user has the option to uh, to log in or give give your app permissions to access their Google data, whether it's their contact info or whatever. This is the the, the page they're going to see. So we click external, we click create, and we're just going to name it. We're going to say Chrome extension OAuth to auth. We don't need to fill out any of this for the development side. We're going to save. And let's move on to the credentials. We're going to need two credentials. First, the OAuth2 client ID, which allows us to access the user's uh, Google data. So we're going to create a credential. We're going to get an OAuth client ID. We need the Chrome app application type. I'm just going to call this the Chrome extension OAuth2 auth application ID, which is the same as this guy right here, the Chrome extension ID. So just copy this. 
navigate back over, paste it here, create. Click OK. Now we need an API key just to test out the uh, the OAuth 2 features. We're just going to use the people API, which allows us to manage the user's uh, contacts, Google contacts. So we're going to go to the library. We're going to look for the people API. People API. There we go. Click that. We're going to click the enable. We're going to go down to the credentials. Click to visit all of the credentials and the APIs. We just need an API key. So create credentials, API key. There we go. So now we're all set up to actually start coding. All right, so let's get to the actual coding. Actually, before we do that, let me just show you the files we're working with. We're not using all of the files in a basic Chrome extension. We're just going to use the manifest, obviously. We're going to use the background to do all of the uh, the OAuth 2 stuff. We're going to use the uh, the pop-up page. We're not going to be injecting a page into the... Uh, into any of the tabs. So the pop-up is just this, you saw the image right here. So we click this button right here, there's a script attached, and using this script we're gonna do things like, what am I gonna show you? I'm gonna show you how to get an access token, I'm gonna show you how to get basic profile information of the person logged into the OAuth 2 endpoint, and then I think we'll finish off with, I think we'll do, how about getting that person's contacts? We're gonna create a contact in their contact book, and then we're gonna delete contacts in their contact book. And so that's just the basic skeletal outline of the Chrome extension we're working with. Let's uh, let's shore up this uh, this manifest.json. We need to add another key value uh, value uh, property. So we're gonna add the OAuth2 key, and it's an object with a client ID and scopes. And the scope is an array. And that client ID we got from, or we get from, the console developer Google's thing. So it'd be this guy, let me close that guy, it'd be this guy right here. So you can just copy this, or you can go into there and copy it here. But we're just going to copy it here, and we'll paste it right here. There we go. And for scopes, we're going to need profile, so I can get that profile information in the email, so we can get the email with the profile. As well as, since we're going to be modifying the user's contacts, we need, what do we need? We're going to need the HTTPS called slash slash www.googleapis.com slash auth slash contacts. I think that's the name of the API. And let me put a comma there. So that looks good. And while I'm at it, let me just add the API key to the background. Right here is a constant. Const API key is equal to. We can go back to our console, copy it here, and just paste it right here. And let's just do this for now. Let user signed in. We'll track whether or not the user signed in. And we'll set it to false for now. Equals false. So that's a bit of the preliminary work. Let's add this. So what did I say we were going to do? On the request, when we click that button, we're going to have three, I think four things. So if request.message is equal to, the first thing I'm going to show you is get access token. We'll do something there. Else if request on message is equal to the next thing, we'll do a get, get profile. Let me copy this. Paste, paste, paste. There we go. And then we'll do a get contacts from the user or for the user from the user. Get contacts, we'll create a contact and then we will delete a contact. And that should be good for the video. Got some spaces here. All right, so using the uh, the Chrome Identity API is a really easy way to uh, to be uh, interacting with uh, OAuth 2 endpoints. So to get the access token, all we need to do is say chrome.identity identity dot get auth token. We're going to be interactive, yes. So there's two arguments. First one's options. I'm going to say interactive. Interactive, true. And then the second argument is the function with the actual auth token passed back. And I'll just do this. So console.log, console.log, that auth token. Let me just send a message to the front end so it doesn't give me a warning. Return true. Actually, it won't return true. We'll do a send response of true. And to get the profile, again, it's really simple. We just do Chrome, identity, 
dot get profile user info same thing and options let's do a account status is equal to any i'll explain what this is in a second and the second argument is the callback with the user info and we'll do a send response of true and we'll just uh print out the user info console.log user info all right so this account status business um, if you're synced with your browser, let me see if I can show you. Is it here? Yeah. So since I'm not synced in, that's the default account status. If you get the profile user info, the default is sync. If you're not synced in like this, if it's off, you're not going to get any user info. It's going to be blank or undefined. And he says whatever, whether or not the user's synced or not, just give me back the current user logged into the browser. So we're just going to go with the NA. And get contacts, create contact, delete contact. We'll do that in a second. Let's just explore these two first. So let's go to the pop-up script. Let me close this. Let's get the auth token first with a get access token. So when I click that, when I click the uh, the button, we'll do a chrome dot runtime dot send message, and that message is going to be get auth token, get underscore auth token. And we don't need to handle the callback. So back to Chrome extensions, we refresh and we get, what is this? Invalid value for auth2.scopes. Could not load manifest. Retry, what's going on? Manifest, manifest, scope. Ah, plural. This should be plural, not, not uh, singular. So scopes, save that. Let's retry. There we go. Let's refresh. All right, let's click. Actually, I need the background page. Let me do this. Background page, console. We click and we should get an access token. Click me. And why is it not clicking? What are we getting wrong here? Manifest, background, pop up script, get auth token, get, uh, get access token, not get auth token. Get access token. All right, let's try this one more time. Go back here, refresh the extension, got the background page console. Click on the click me, we should get a pop-up that lets me log in. So I click on my name, enter my, and so this is because we're in development mode, we're not in production, so there's a little uh, warning here. So click advanced, we'll go to, uh, or give it access, go to Chrome, whatever, extension auth, allow, there we go. And so that's the, uh, the access token we're going to use to access my, or whatever user signed in, contact data. So that's the second uh, second um, uh, request dot message. So that'd be the get profile. Get underscore profile. Save that. Go back here. Refresh the extension. Click me. We should get there. We go an email and an ID. So that's a unique ID for uh, for me or whichever user signed in. It comes from Google. That's the email I have associated with my uh, Google account. If you're going to save this this uh, this user, whoever's logged into your app, don't do it by email because the user can always change the email. They can't change this ID associated with this uh, with this Google account. So let's quickly uh, do some uh, contact information manipulation. I'm just going to copy and paste some code. I'll be right back. All right, so I've just copied and pasted some code. And it looks complicated. I'm not going to go over everything line by line. That's not the point of the video. But just to show you the workflow that once we get an access token for the user who signed in through their Google, uh, their Google account, we can manipulate things. And we're just happening to manipulate their, uh, their contact, um, contact list. Let me go here first to so show you guys what we're manipulating. Let's go here. It's contacts or contact. Contacts.google.com. Is that it? There we go. So currently I have Wu2. Let me delete this guy. I was practicing earlier. So delete this guy. Actually, let's not delete it. Let me show you what happens when you get. All right, so the same workflow here is in present in all of them. So first we get an access token or an auth token, and then we send it using the fetch. There's a header called authorization. This line right here you need. Bearer, space, and then the actual token value you got back from the auth token here or the the token here and this url just comes from the uh, the people google api we just happen to be using that 
I have a query parameter, a query string here, max members to give me back is 20, and that key has to be equal to the API key we got from your console.developers, this guy right here. So you construct a URL like this, you add headers with the authorization bearer space your token, you do the fetch call, you res.json, and then you get a list of all the contacts for the user. And then we need to do another fetch call where we get each individual user and display their information. Again, I'm not going to go through this line by line, but let's just see what it looks like on the uh, on the back end. So the request on message is get contacts. Get contacts. So let's go back to our extension. Let's do this. Refresh. Give me the background page. Click me. And there we go. That's the response. It's going to be this guy right here. Person. This is how they're identified in the Google contact. It's people slash. And that's the ID number for this guy right here. The uh, the Woo 2, which is this guy right here. Woo 2. So let's add a contact. Same thing. Same workflow. We get an auth token like this. We use the specific URL for the API. We add the API key, and of course, when we're creating contact, it's a method post, not a get. The authorization header is the same thing, bear space your token, contact type is just JSON, and in the body, we're going to add a contact with the name Johnny and Silver, and of course, we fetch it. We have the res.json, which spits back out what you what you gave it, the contact you gave it, and we're going to print it to the, uh, the console. So let's do this one here, create contact. So this one would be create underscore contact. Save, go back, let's go to the extensions tab, refresh, click me, and we added this contact with all the stuff here. Let's just go back to my contacts. No, I did that. There we go. Let's refresh this page. And there we go, it's Johnny Silver, the guy we just added. Let's delete a contact. So we go down to this, uh, this uh, branch of the tree, the if conditional tree. Same workflow again. You get an access token, you construct the URL with the API key, you have a fetch options, the headers, authorization, bear, space your token, and of course we're doing a delete uh, method right here. Not a get, not a post, but a delete. So if we get a token and all the members of the group, I just pick the first member of my contacts list to delete. If you wanted to delete a specific uh, member, you'd have to construct it here. So this member zero would be that unique ID I showed you, which is that people slash and then their little ID like that. But since I don't want to actually do it manually, we're just going to get all the contacts and we're going to delete the first contact in the array. So again, the methods delete, the header's the same authorization bear token. We fetch that and we just console log the response. So let's delete a contact. So back here, delete contact save let's go to the extensions refresh and I click there you go we get a response Google contacts why does it always do that there we go and let's see who it deleted it should delete I don't know who came first Johnny maybe J F5 no delete the woo two guy anyway so that's how you delete a contact and before I let you go let me show you one other thing we have this let users signed in. We can monitor whether or not the user signed into the browser or not using the Chrome Identity API. So it's Chrome dot identity dot on sign in change dot add listener to a function. It gives us the the ID of the user signed in. So the ID and it gives us their status. So all I'm going to do is say console, actually console, and we'll do an alert, alert of their status. So I'll save, we go back here, let me refresh the extension, and let's sign out of the browser. Sign out, false for signed out, we sign back in. And of course, true for signed in. So that's just a way of monitoring whether or not your user signed in or signed out of the, the browser. Anyway, that's going to be it for the video. Leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed, and I will see you guys in the next one.